Well, hey there, YouTube. We're back on the road. I figured I'd try to get a little bit of video while I still had a little bit of light left and you can still see a little bit. Well, another good hard day's work. About 740. Like I said, it took uh, took a little bit longer than I wanted to. But hey, that's all right. Uh, that's why we get paid the big bucks sometimes. <laughs> Hope everybody's having a good evening. Uh, yeah, account update. I <laughs> got way off track earlier with my account update. I apologize about that. My line tends to in the water sometimes, but that's all right. Hey, I want to give a shout out to everybody that's helped me out. Low Buck Prepper, hey buddy, thanks a lot for the, uh, the shout out. Really helped uh, get my numbers up. I think I'm about 170, 175 subscribers right now. Uh, I know that number might drop off a little bit through the winter time uh, over the next month or so, just until I get a chance to put some more videos out. But I've got some great, great stuff I'm planning on. Uh, one of them, I alluded to in another video when I was showing my ammo storage, and that ammo storage is just my range ammo and carry ammo. Uh, my other stuff's put up, and I'll probably do a video on that this winter time uh, when I have some more time. But uh, some prep ideas that I'm working on that I, like I said, I alluded to earlier was reloading preps. Uh, that's something I think, uh, as far as spare parts go, I believe that's something that I haven't seen any videos out there on it, so I think somebody might be, uh, somebody needs to think about that in your prepping. If, if reloading is going to be something that you're going to look at doing uh, later on in life, uh, in a SHTF scenario, WROL scenario, uh, some type of civil unrest, or you know, just whatever your plans are, I like to reload because it's inexpensive. Uh, I know what's going through my gun. And I don't have any problems. Sorry, I'm still uh, still sweating a little bit from a uh, little physical exertion there. Uh, but looking at spare parts for your reloading machines, I know I have a Lee Loadmaster. I love it. I, I've probably loaded, I would say, close to 100,000 rounds on that press. And worst breakdown that I've had that shut me down for a while was a 10 cent part. And that is the primer feeder, the primer slider. It has a little, little tooth on it that catches the primer and throws it under the, under the case. And got jammed up, broke the lip off of it, and I was down for about two weeks. And this was when I was shooting competitively. And uh, I got puckered about the last three or four days before the part came in, wondering if I was going to be able to reload for a match or not. Uh, luckily, the part came in. And so that really got me thinking, because at this time, this was during when uh, Clinton was first in office, we had the assault ban going on, and a lot of people were, were going through the same type of mentality that's happening now. And it got me to thinking about, hey, what if they do start taking away some of our rights? What if they do start outlawing some of these things? I'm not encouraging you to break the law by any means, but you've got to take care of yourself. And so I went in and, and looked at that 10 cent part, and hey, that thing shut me down from reloading. And if it would have been in a, you know, a life or death situation where I needed rounds to, to eat, to survive, then I wouldn't have had them if I would have been running out. So I went in and I probably have about 20 of those. I think at the time they were 10, 15 cents a piece. And so I bought 15, 20 of them. I'd have to go back and look at my parts box and see how many I had. And I went through my entire press and looked at what's going to shut my machine down and bought spares. And that way I feel pretty comfortable that I, my machine is going to be up and running all the time. The same thing with my firearms. I have a Smith & Wesson 5906 and a Smith & Wesson 4006. And one of the mentalities I had when I bought my 9mm and I bought my 40 caliber was that the guns are basically the same except for caliber. A lot of the parts that would keep my gun from functioning are interchangeable. And so I went through the list of parts, and I think I spent about $200 on parts. There again, typically what's gonna shut me down is those 10, 15 cent parts, the small springs, the small plungers. You lose one of those in some shag carpet, and your gun doesn't work. And you've got a four, five, six $600 gun that's non-functional. You know, great looking paperweight, good conversational piece on the coffee table, but your gun doesn't work, and so basically it's useless. So I went in there again, spent about 200 parts on springs, mag springs, uh, mag base plates, uh, anything that I thought 
would keep my gun from functioning. Firing pins, firing pin springs, uh, adjustment screws, etc. There again, $200 well spent. I look at it as an insurance policy. And in all the time that I've had my guns, my 9mm, my 5906, I think has had close to 50, 60,000 rounds through it. My 40 caliber, not so much. It's had about 20,000 rounds through it. And worst thing that's happened to me is I broke a firing pin spring, and that was on my 9mm. And that was only after about uh, 2,500 rounds. Evidently, just had a weak spring. And so that's one thing I look at. I have a couple of Glocks now. I have a Glock 17, a Glock 23, or 19 and 23, a compact 9mm and 40 caliber. Get all the numbers mixed up. I apologize. It's, uh, it's late and I'm tired. And that's next on my list of preps to do. I have a good friend that's an armorer. And so we're going to sit down and we're going to go through the list of parts. I pulled out my Glock manual and was looking at all the parts that are interchangeable. That's one of the reasons that I uh, bought the two Glocks last summer, uh, this past summer, is just for that compatibility. I'll always make sure I'll have parts. If one goes down, I don't have the spares, I can pull them off the other gun if, if I want to use that particular weapon. And so that's a prep that I think people need to start looking at on. My AR-15, I have uh, all the fire control parts, all the small bells or springs and, and parts that could get lost, extra firing pins, bolt carrier, bolt face, bolt springs, all that stuff. Uh, extra buffer and buffer spring. You know, anything that would keep my gun from functioning, I've gone in and bought spare parts for. And probably what I'll wind up doing as an addendum to this video is I'll go in and show you uh, how I arrange my parts, how I have them labeled, numbered, what all they go to. And typically you can probably go to the manufacturer's website and pull that stuff up. Hey, I'm just noticing, looking at my screen here, it looks like a low buck prepper video with a low light. Uh, it's ambiance low buck, so uh, that's what I like about your videos. You have the ambiance. You've got the, you've got the drink in your hand. Of course, I can't do that. I've, I've got my Coke. Uh, I'll have to wait for the adult beverage till I get home, which is probably going to be if I check the GPS here. It's a cool thing about Garmin GPS. Don't leave home without it. Uh, I've got the gun in here, too. So uh, always, always prepared. Um, you know, I'm out by the out by the airport now, so I've got about 10 minutes till I get home. So I'm doing pretty good. But uh, I digress. But so that's something to look at. Look at your parts for your equipment. Uh, make sure you've got plenty of stuff to keep your stuff up and running. Because seriously, if, if we get into a situation where you know the postal service is going to stop delivering on Saturdays, there's a good possibility to start shutting some postal offices down. Some of you in rural areas. UPS, FedEx, it might be expensive to get there and you've had to rely on the, the postal service to get your stuff. That's something to think about coming up later on. Um, bad weather, you know, you name the events that can happen, shipping is probably going to be one of the last things on people's mind is trying to get stuff shipped out and orders filled. Electricity goes down, you don't have the internet, you don't have phone, mail's probably not going to be working. So those are just things that I was thinking about as I was getting this stuff together. That worst case scenario, what do I need to keep my stuff up and running um, for months, years, etc., and keep me going. I just think that's a good prep that people need to look at. I'm going to sign off for now. I'm running out of light, getting in close to town. Thanks a lot, YouTube. Keep prepping. Start from where you are. Get on top of it. Make a plan. Follow that plan. Keep your powder, powder dry, YouTube, and we'll talk to you later. As always, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Thanks a lot.